$1,000 savings of up to $4,500. Coverage of the eclipse is proudly presented by Volvo and the all-new XC60. Go to RacingTheSun.com to get more info about the most innovative way to view this historic eclipse. Eclipse of the century. All right, so the big day is tomorrow. Total eclipse, moon dances in front of the sun. We've got seating rooms all across the country uh, where a lot of people are coming together to watch this event. This will be the only time their life that will be able to watch it. Let's go to CNN. Miguel Marquez, who's in Independence, Oregon. I'm guessing this is your first visit. Uh, where you are counting down to the eclipse. Miguel, I know folks are excited. I got the best duty ever. Look, this is going to be like the Super Bowl, the, the uh, World Cup, the Olympics, uh, all of us come together. But the game in this case will only be about two and a half minutes long. Millions and millions of people pouring in to the path of totality. Countdown to total eclipse, coast to coast. This is the sun, and then this is the eclipse, and then this is the moon. And it goes directly at it and then makes it totally dark. In its path, I don't need a work. An astronomical celebration in Oregon to South Carolina. The place to be, the 70 mile swan of full eclipse or totality. The moon shadow racing across the country right through 12 states, turning day into night. What do you think's going to happen? Change your time. 
time zone for this. It will eventually hit San Rafael, Kansas City at about 2 o'clock Eastern time, and then eventually cross just past Charleston, South Carolina, just shortly before 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But the ultimate question that everybody wants to know is, what is the weather going to be like? Because if you have rain, if you have clouds, you're not really going to get the best view for that clip. So here's what we have out to the west. States like Oregon, Idaho, even into Wyoming. Rain is not really going to be a factor. However, especially in Oregon, you may have some haze from some of the wildfire smoke that's out there. Now, technically, that's not necessarily going to ruin your eclipse viewing. If anything, it may actually kind of change the coloring a little bit, maybe to a bit more of a red or an orange hue because of the smoke and haze effect on that coloring. Now, when you move a little bit further east, that changes entirely. We have not just some rain chances in the forecast for places like Kansas City and Des Moines and Lincoln, but also severe weather. We're talking damaging winds, the potential even for an isolated tornado or two, and large hail. So if you're in those regions, make sure you also have your weather alerts ready if you need to pack up the camping equipment and get to a safe place. Further down to the south and east, places like Columbia, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, we also have the potential for at least a few isolated showers and weather storms in the forecast here. The question is going to be, some places like, say, Nashville, where it's not really supposed to rain until late at night, but you may have some clouds that develop ahead of time. Victor and Christian, we talk about this ahead of time. It's like the folks that say, I can't get sunburned, it's cloudy out. Even if it is cloudy during the eclipse, you have to have the glasses. So make sure that you still have these on. If you are in totality, you can take these off once everything lines up perfectly for, say, about that one and a half to two minute time frame. Until then, you have to keep the glasses on. So just make sure that you have a pair. And if you don't, we talked about this last hour. Check your local animal shelters. A lot of them are taking donations for these for local charities. So that may be a good option to check out. You may have got the best view of going to be the people out on the boats on the coast. Mm -hmm. They don't worry that traffic. They don't have to worry about anything. If you're in the path, I would like it close to the I'm going to get your glasses. <laughs> 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 We don't know what we're looking at. <laughs> help, help us in layman's terms understand what this app does and how it works. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Morning. So it's very, it's very simple. Mobile devices are extremely sophisticated with their ability to geolocate and get your coordinates, like for using navigation programs and things like that. So um, my app takes that technology just to do your location, and then in the app itself has the formula for calculating the contact times for the eclipse. So once your phone knows your location, the app can calculate the exact contact times for first contact, second contact, third, and fourth contact. And then it will audibly um, give you announcements to tell you when those events are going to happen. So it's actually quite simple for the first time observer. They tap one button to have their phone locate. They tap a second button to load those specific times into the timer. And then the timer will talk them through the entire eclipse. It's basically like having an astronomer uh, next to you telling you what to look for. Which is great because we understand from uh, Allison Chinchar and Weather that this isn't just, you know, an event that happens at one moment. It happens over a period of time, and nobody wants to be there with the glasses saying, okay, so what am I looking at yeah. now? <laughs> so I understand that NASA has approached you about this app. How are they planning to, to utilize this? Yeah, that's an interesting story. You know, I'm very fortunate because I love following the NASA program, and I live next to Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. So I, I have, through time, been able to meet a lot of the NASA scientists, including the solar scientists, because I went to my first eclipse in 2001, and I've had contact with them. So they knew about my app, and they're going to be running two main observing sites, one in Kentucky and one in Tennessee, where they plan to play my app through the PA system so that all the basic announcements are taken care of for them and they don't have to worry about making the basic announcements about observing for the change in temperature or the change in lighting and counting down to the exact contact times. And also my app makes announcements for when it is safe to take your solar glasses off just after second contact. 
and a reminder to put them back on just before third contact, and that is very important. So it just takes a little pressure off of the folks running those two observing sites to have that be automated. Okay, we only have about 30 seconds left, but tell us about the solar bands. Uh, what, what are they? And why are what are shadow there? bands? Well, shadow bands happen just in the final 60 seconds before totality begins, and the final 60 seconds right after, right after totality ends. And you look on the ground, and you look for these very faint, low-contrast shadows that get created by that slit of light coming through the atmosphere. It's very exciting to see them. Not everybody will see them, but the app reminds them to look to the ground at 60 seconds before second contact to look for these very faint shadows. My, my kids are going to love this. My yes. little scientific girls are going to love this. Dr. Tellison, thank you so much. We appreciate you walking through it. Well, thank you. This is an exciting time for the country. All right. Take good care. Uh, listen, you know, it's been since World War II.